All right, so this is part three of derivative problems with polar. So we want to find the horizontal tangents along the curve r equals one plus cosine theta. All right, so we want to find where that derivative is going to be zero, okay? Of course, now we need to actually find the derivative. The first thing we need to do is to find dr d theta. All right, and of course, dr d theta of one plus cosine theta there, that's just going to be negative sine theta. All right, now that we have that, we can find dy dx, all right, and we know the formula for dy dx. Of course, if you're confused on where this formula is coming from, definitely go check out that explanation video that I did on uh, polar derivatives, all that good stuff. So we can just plug in with what we know about what our dr d theta is and what our r is, okay? Plugging in, we're going to get, actually I can do this over here, that our derivative is going to be negative, it'll be sine squared theta here, plus r times cosine theta, that's just going to be cosine theta times one plus cosine theta. This will be all over. Now we have dr d theta, that's negative sine theta, times cosine theta, that's just going to be negative sine theta cosine theta, minus r, which we know to be one plus cosine theta, times sine theta, all right? And then multiplying these out here, we're gonna get that the derivative is equal to negative sine squared theta. This will now be plus cosine theta, plus cosine squared theta, this will now be over negative sine theta cosine theta. And now this will be minus sine theta. And we'll also get a minus sine theta cosine theta. All right, so of course we're gonna have uh, these two combined to be minus two sine theta cosine theta, but we also have something on top that can make this numerator look a lot easier. Okay, and we have a cosine squared minus sine squared. We know that to be cosine of two theta, right? That's our double angle identity. So we can put in cosine of two theta. We can of course add cosine theta because that was already there. We put that over negative two sine theta cosine theta minus sine theta. All right, and of course that is our derivative dy dx. Okay, now where do we go from here? Well, we're, we're finding horizontal tangents, which means that we need to find out where this numerator is going to be zero, okay? At the same time, we don't want this denominator to be zero. So we're gonna have to check both the numerator and the denominator, okay? How are we gonna do that? We're gonna set the numerator equal to zero to start off, all right? So cosine two of two theta plus cosine of theta is equal to zero. Okay, our first one, we know that of course theta is going to equal pi because cosine of two pi, that's the same thing as cosine of zero, that's one, and cosine of pi is negative one, so those two will offset to become zero, all right? So we're gonna end up with theta <coughs> equal to pi. All right, next, there are others, okay? There are two others, and this comes, you just kind of have to understand what you're doing here, okay? You gotta have a better understanding. All you're doing is, is doubling the angle, okay? And we know that cosine's negative in the second quadrant. So what happens here is if you have the angle pi over three, all right, let's just say kind of pi over three, let's put that out there, all right? If you double that, okay, and get two pi over three, okay, well, cosine of pi over three, we know to be one half, right? But since with, with cosine of two theta, right, we're gonna have negative one half because it's the same thing, right? It, it's basically, you know, you do 180, or I guess you could say pi minus two pi over three, and that's going to be pi over three, okay? So this is the same thing as saying negative cosine of pi over three because it's in the second quadrant, all right? So this is still going to be equal to zero, okay? That's just another example. For the same reason, 
five pi over three will also work. All right, and now we just need to test these and put these into our denominator to make sure that they will not make the denominator zero as well. Okay, so let's try our first one we got pi, all right? Negative two sine of pi, cosine of pi, minus sine of pi. Since we know that sine of pi is zero, the denominator will be zero at theta equals pi, all right? So that is going to be a predicament, all right? So we're going to, let's say that we have to check this, all right? So we're kind of gonna, I'm just gonna put it in a red box because we're gonna have to check that later. But what about pi over three and five pi over three? All right, well, for these, we can kind of already see, or right, you can kind of already get the sense that this is not gonna make the denominator zero, okay? You don't have, you know, anything becoming zero here and you have two things being subtracted. I mean, you're not gonna get any, any zeros here, okay? So now, like I said, we're going to have to check this pi, all right? How we do that is by taking a limit. Right, and this may be familiar from when we did parametric equations. All right, we're going to do the limit as theta approaches pi for that whole dy dx cosine of 2 theta plus cosine theta all over negative 2 sine theta cosine theta minus sine theta. All right, so we know that when you do this, your numerator is zero and your denominator is zero. That gives us a zero over zero case, which means we can use L'Hopital, tau, all right? And when we use L'Hopital, tau, we just take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom separately to get negative two sine of two theta minus sine of theta over, we're just now going to, we're gonna have to do some, some product rule here. That's, that's, that's a shame. We'll get a negative, this will be negative two sine theta times negative sine theta. Now we will do our second term that's going to be adding cosine theta times negative two sine, or it's negative two cosine theta. And we'll just have a minus sine theta, or minus, this will now be a cosine theta at the end. Perfect. All right, now what happens when we plug in pi? All right, we don't need to just, I mean, you can figure that out if you want to. You're gonna get a negative two sine squared theta. Uh, this will be minus two cosine squared theta. So since you have a positive here and a negative here, you're, I mean, you could probably do a double angle. Anyways, let's just plug in pi. It's probably a little bit easier, all right? We get a negative two sine of two pi, all right? This is going to be zero minus sine of pi. That's also going to be zero. So our numerator is again zero. Okay, so we're gonna have this be equal zero over what? Well, when we plug in pi on the bottom, you get a, this will this will all be zero, okay? Because we have just sines. Here we have cosines, okay? Cosine of pi, that's going to be negative one times negative two cosine of pi. That's going to be two, all right? And then we have a minus cosine pi, okay? And of course that will just become a plus, that's a bad plus, plus one which of course is not going to be zero, okay? So that, right, that's negative two plus one, which is negative one. So this ends up equaling zero. What does that tell us though? That tells us that this is going to be a horizontal tangent at theta equals pi. So all of these thetas are going to now be horizontal tangents. Now, all we're going to have to do is just find our values for these and we have our answer. So we know that r equals one cosine theta. So we can just start plugging this in. One plus cosine of pi. Well, that's just going to be zero. All right. So we're gonna have a horizontal tangent at the pole. That's what that's telling you. Because if you have an r of zero, you're at the pole. Next, we have r equals one plus cosine of pi over three. 
Well, that's just going to be one half, so you're going to get an R of three halves. Lastly, we have one plus cosine of five pi over three. All right, well, five pi over three, that is the same thing as 300 degrees, okay? And that's basically cosine of 60 in the fourth quadrant. Cosine is positive in the fourth quadrant. So this is going to be, again, one half. All right, so you get a three halves here. Okay, so we can say that there will be horizontal tangents at 0 comma pi, which you could also write as the pole. All right, there's also three over two comma pi over three and three over two comma five pi over three. All right, so yeah, that's basically it. All right, we had to do a little bit of uh, limit action because we had a zero in the numerator and the denominator. But other than that, I mean, it's fairly straightforward, all right? It's, it's nothing you really haven't done before. We're now just applying it to polar. All right, so that's gonna do it for this video. So if this video helped you, make sure to leave a like and subscribe by clicking my icon in the top left. You can also view the playlist for parametric and polar, the explanation video for derivatives with polar, and the next video in the series. See you soon.